Welcome to day number eight. And in today's video, we're going to be installing this PVC ceiling cladding. And I've also treated myself to a brand new impactor because I'm fed up with just using one drill. Anyway, as usual, before we get on with it, let's see where we're up to. So let's see what we got then. Now I've taken this wall down. Now the most important thing I need to do first is protect this bath because now it's in I don't want to get it scratched or damaged. So the first thing I've done is put two pieces of cardboard into the bottom and I've used two dust sheets to protect the bath itself and a towel to protect the bath filler. Now I'm just getting ready for framing out for the ceiling. So the first thing I've done is I've gone in the loft and I've marked, well I've drilled holes either side of the roof joists. So you see there. And then when I noticed when I was up there, they actually cut that one out to get that in. And then there's one there and then one right against the wall. So this is up in the loft, so you can see these roof, I don't know what they're called, trusses, joists, whatever they're called. And you can see all these wires are everywhere. This is a dangerous house for wiring. And this is how I found the transformer for these lights. So yes, this needs to come out. And all this wiring needs to come out as well. Looks like this house is going to need a rewire pretty damn soon. And what I've done is I've set my laser level up now. And you can see how far out it is. This ceiling. <laughs> so... Obviously I'm going to put my wood as flat as I can to the ceiling there. Now I have done a little trick here and I don't know if any of you use this. Where you just put your saw, clamp it to your door or your wall. And then you can get your laser level up because it's magnetic on the back. One of the things I have noticed is I spent all that time for the vent. And it's not going to go in. So I'm going to have to fill that hole in and put the vent here in the centre of the bath where that was and then go out through the gable end that's another job I've got to do so let's stop looking at it and let's just get on with it so what I'm doing here is just applying some bond and fix adhesive to the back of the wood before I fix it to the roof trusses So here goes, using my impactor for the first time, screwing in the first screw, and I miss the truss. What an idiot. Now that's the first piece in. Now the wood I'm using here is actually 2 by one planed pieces of wood. You could actually use roof battens for this, but 
the roof battens were slightly thicker than these and I wanted to keep the ceiling as close as I could to the original ceiling because my wife didn't want it coming down too far. So that's the second piece of wood in and I'm just checking with my level now to make sure the marks that correspond with my laser level are actually level, which they are. Now I'm just using a couple of screws to fix into the studs in the wall to uh, keep it in place until the glue goes off. I can't fix anything into the ceiling because one, the ceiling's not level here and two, there isn't anything to fix into the ceiling too. Because this is where the ceiling is out the most, what I've got to do now is drill and plug the wall to keep the wood onto the wall because it's too far down from the ceiling to be able to fix it into the ceiling. So again, more adhesive on the back of the wood to make sure it sticks to the wall. Now all the wood is fixed to the ceiling and the walls, it's just a matter now of filling the gaps with this bond and fix adhesive. And on these bigger gaps I'm just using the expanding foam to fill the gaps in. As you can see that's the framework is completed but before I actually put the cladding up I need to get prepared for the down lights. Again I'm using my laser level here to make sure I get my lights in line. So I've made two marks on the wall, one on one side one on the other and I've just lined it up now with the laser and I can measure off the walls now to get the right distance. The cross as you can see and where the lights are going to be. Now what I'm doing here is cutting out holes in the plasterboard ceiling for the lights to go through because obviously the wood isn't as thick as the lights and also the clamps on the lights are going to be fitting through the plasterboard so it's going to be clamping down on the plasterboard and not the plastic roof. Now the hole saw I'm using here is a lot bigger than the hole saw required for doing the plastic. I'm using a 65mm one here, but I only need a 57mm one for doing the lights. Now I have been in the loft and checked to make sure nothing is in the way, so no loose wires or any rafters are in the way. And I'm going to be putting in six spotlights. Now when you're doing these recessed down lights, they are generally positioned one and a half to two feet away from the walls, with a spacing of three to four feet between each light. So basically to get the distance and how many lights you need, you divide the ceiling height by two. This will then give you how far apart you need. So if you had an 8 foot high ceiling, your lights would need to be 4 foot apart. Now again, technically, I would only need 4 lights here, but I thought it would look a lot better if I actually used 6. I did buy 10. 
So now I've finished drilling the primary holes for the lights, I can start putting the cladding up. Now the first thing I've done is measured the width of the ceiling and the boards to see where my joints are going to fall. And I didn't want a tiny little joint at the other end. So what I did was to put the first two pieces up, then use a third to keep them in line and make sure they were square. And then using my level, I marked along the wall on the ceiling to give me a straight edge to work from. So the first two pieces, I actually cut the width of my level off them. Now the first piece in this row, which you've just seen me fix to the ceiling, was actually the off cut from the second row. And I'm just starting the third row now here with a full piece. And then the next piece will then go on to fix to the wall at the other end. So I'm now marking the final piece on this row. So what I've done is I've flipped this piece around so the bit at my right hand is where it will attach to the previous piece of ceiling. So I'm just marking the length. So that means the piece on the other side will be the start of the next row. Now the best way I've found of cutting this PVC cladding is if I'm going along its width like I am now, I used my wood saw to do this. But if I go along its length, I use my jigsaw with a fine toothed blade. In. It made it so much easier. Remember, always wait till the blade stops before you move your jigsaw along. So let's see if this final piece fits. Now I've cut it. And all you're doing is sliding the tongue into the groove and it fits like a glove. Now again, I've got my laser level back onto the same marks I did before. And the little blue crosses you can see are going to be the centre holes of where I'm going to be drilling these 57mm holes for the lights. So let's have the light switch on, see if they work. Oh my word, that's bright. How good is that? Makes the bathroom look very bright now. Now the final job for today is to get this ceiling fan installed above me and block off the old fan over there. So let's get on with it then. So you can now see the fan is in position. Let's have a look and see what I've done in the loft. So now I'm in the loft, you can see the fan is all kind of piped up, wired up and ready to go. So that's the ceiling fan all up and running and done. Now to block off the old fan hole, what I've done is I've used the core bits from coring out for the new one. So I've put the internal block one here, formed up around it. Now I was going to plaster it, but I don't need to because the tiles will cover all that. Let's have a look outside. Now there's the new hole. Now I need to get a grill for the front of there because the old one I broke it, carried it off. But it was rubbish anyway. I need one of those what's closed until the fan's running. 
and you can see I've filled the hole there with the culvert from the outside of the wall. Now that is the end of day eight. Hope you've enjoyed it. Now we've got a two week wait now for the tiles to turn up. If they come any earlier they said they'll give me a ring. So I will catch you on the next one guys. Cheers.